Hi everyone and welcome back. I have really enjoyed your insights and your comments the last couple of weeks in the comment section underneath our videos and hope we can do more of that together this week. You know, just a, a friendly reminder that how this works is you write up your comment, hit post, and then a window will pop up asking you for your name. You can put your name or an initial in there, skip over the fields that ask for an email address and a website and click comment as guest. We really do learn so much more when we learn in community together. The chapter list on our website, newlifecollingwood.com slash book club, lists nine chapters that we're going to cover this summer, but we have 10 weeks together. And week 10 is listed as a Reader's Choice Week. We're going to do a couple of things with that week that I hope you're going to enjoy. First, you get to pick the chapter that we're going to cover. It's Reader's Choice Week, so it's your choice. So have a look through the chapters of our book, excluding the nine that we're already going to be covering, and pick your favorite. Send me an email to let me know which one you would like us to cover on week 10, and whichever chapter gets the most votes, so to speak, is the one that we'll look at together on week 10. Secondly, we're not going to film episode 10 the way that we're doing the other nine. We'd like to get together in person and do our Reader's Choice discussion together. So on Monday, August the 23rd at 7 p.m., we'd like to gather around the fire at the New Life facility. So email me your chapter request by July the 30th, so we have some time to put this all together, to steve at newlifecollingwood.com, and then mark August the 23rd at 7 p.m. on your calendars for our fireside get-together. This week, we are looking at chapter 5, which covers the prayer of relinquishment. And here's Foster from page 49 of our book. We learn the prayer of relinquishment in the school of Gethsemane. Gaze in adoring wonder at the scene, the solitary figure etched against gnarled olive trees, the blood-like sweat falling to the ground, the human longing let this cup pass. The final relinquishment, not my will but yours be done. We do well to meditate often on this unparalleled expression of relinquishment. Here we have the incarnate Son praying through his tears and not receiving what he asks. And I can't overemphasize how powerful that last statement is. Here we have the incarnate Son of God, Jesus himself, praying through his tears and not receiving from his Father what he asks. And to me, that's just an incredible wow moment. Jesus asks in there that the cup be passed, that his coming suffering on the cross might not have to be. He doesn't want to experience this suffering, but he says to God, if you're willing. And then most incredibly, given the stakes here for Jesus, we have the laying down of his human will. Jesus struggles in his prayer. We read about that. He struggles, but he relinquishes his will, his human desire in favor of what his Father's will is. Let's jump ahead a couple of pages to page 52. This is my very favorite quote from this chapter. The prayer of relinquishment is a bona fide letting go, but it's a release with hope. We have no fatalist resignation. We are buoyed up by a confident trust in the character of God. Even when all we see are the tangled threads on the backside of life's tapestry, we know that God is good and he is out to do us good always. That gives us hope to believe that we are the winners regardless of what we are being called upon to relinquish. Well, how do we do this? Even given that there's hope, 
when we approach relinquishing our will. Let's just be honest with ourselves and say that it's not easy. It's not easy for us to say to God, I put aside what I want and accept what you want. You know, we may even know intellectually in our minds that that's best, that what God wants for us, what he plans for us, what his will for us is, is best for us. But it's still hard to let go of our desires and our plans. Foster helps us out with a little bit of a roadmap. So we'd like to spend a little bit extra time in prayer today. So let's once again begin by moving to a comfortable place and position. And once you're comfortable, I invite you again to close your eyes. And I'd like to read for you from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Next, I want to read for you from Luke's account of Jesus' prayer on the Mount of Olives. As I read this, try to imagine yourself sitting there with Jesus listening to his words, seeing his face. Try to imagine his feelings. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Next, we want to make that kind of prayer our own. So let's spend a few moments in your own words telling God that you place yourself in his hands. Tell him that you are ready for him to do his will in your life. Tell him that you accept his plan for you. Next, we pray a prayer of release. Spend a few moments talking to God about who and what is important in your life, your family, your plans for the future, and then say these words to him. God, I release all of these into your care. God, thank you that we can trust you with everything, right down to the people and plans that are the most important to us. As much as we care and plan for their good, we acknowledge 
that you do this even more so and you are infinitely capable of working good in every situation. Thank you for Jesus, who for our sakes relinquished everything into your hands. And we pray in his name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us once again this week. There's a discussion starter below the video. Next week, we're going to look at chapter six, and that's called Formation Prayer. I encourage you to read ahead on that this week. We'll see you next time.